Warning, this episode of the Rereading Wolf podcast has suspiciously little wolf content. I was about to say that it's our first truly self-indulgent episode where we talk way more about ourselves than wolf, but truthfully, this whole enterprise of spending two plus hours on five page chapters, it's kind of self-indulgent from the beginning. But anyway, if you could care less about us, please skip this episode, or at least you could skip to the last 10 or so minutes, because there we talk about some possible plans for a wolf con. I respect your time enough to be upfront that this one is a serious tangent. Otherwise, this episode's just me and James rambling a bit about a momentous moment in our lives in which we meet face-to-face for the very first time after corresponding and recording with each other in one way or another for a couple decades. Our excuse for that was Capricorn, which is a Chicago sci-fi fantasy con that's been going on for over 40 years, and even though there was nothing remotely wolf-related going on this time, we thought it'd be a good excuse to hang out. So here's the thing. We recorded twice over a couple days that we were there, and as I sat down to edit this, I realized that everything we recorded on the first day was unusable because I must have jiggled some cord the wrong way or something. Um, It was all a very haphazard, on-the-go mic setup. And I'm pretty sure you don't want to listen to half an hour of this. So someone asked on Facebook, is there there any surprises? I'll I'll say, uh, you're taller than that. Oh, really? Yeah. (laughs) To be truthful, you didn't miss very much. We kind of complained about how small Capricorn was and how much got canceled at the last minute, because most of the guests of honor couldn't come, like, uh, Kat Valente and John Scalzi, who are supposed to be there, and some others, talked about how Austin was frozen over, so James had to come a day late, which means we did miss some stuff. How, unfortunately, no one ever asked us about our Rereading Wolf stickers that we put on our name badges, and how it seemed that the only noticeable cosplaying around was pretty super niche, like a bunch of folk dressed in fake Space Navy uniforms based on David Weber's Honorverse books, which I have not read. I know I asked James if he had, and I suddenly forgot if he said yes. Um, Oh, and the other thing was that I mentioned I got him Chicago deep dish from Giordano's for dinner. And if you're a big, like, Lou Malnati's fan or Pizzeria Uno fan or some other place, please send hate mail to rereadingwolf at gmail.com so we can have that argument in private and save all the non-Chicago folk. So, But luckily, our longer talk on the second day was good, so here it is. I promise we'll get back to actual wolf content in the next episode. Hey, Craig. We are day two. We, we, we figure we have to report on something. I mean, we're here. We're actually <laughs> sitting again in the same room, so we have to... I, I, we should admit, right from the beginning, there was not much wolf content here at this conference, which was a massive failing on their part. Um, <laughs> and so if they had considered at least, I don't know, we could have had seven, or eight, seven or eight wolf-based panels, it yeah. would have been much better, but... <laughs> Okay. Well, if they just had ours, just think of all the people who would have shown up. Just That's right. For, yeah. That's right. But we, I think we've agreed that, that prob- we are. It might well have been just us and Gary K. Wolf. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but I think we agreed that we, we, we work to do something. So we'll try to figure out a place, either in Texas or around here, where we'll, where we can we're take over cons. and seed a con with a little wolf con. That's right. A little mini wolf con in there. And if. If other folk want to come, like, and the nice thing is Austin and Chicago are both airline hubs. That's true. Right? Yeah. Because they are Southwest. Are they yeah. a Southwest hub? Oh, yeah. Austin? Is, okay. Yep. So, I know Love Field. I just couldn't remember if Austin was too. But, yeah. So, but we, you can, you can get to one of those. And then, yeah, we'll, we'll see if we can piggyback on something else. Because that might be a bigger draw for more people if we're like, you can also go talk about other things other than Gene <laughs> Wolfe. And that might be fun. Anyway, yeah, I think we'll, we'll try to do that. But. Otherwise, the only other sort of bit of news I think that we could say directly came out of this was you did get to talk to Gary K. Wolf, who folk may know from uh, Locus. Locus. He's done book reviews forever. He's also Food Street Podcast. Yep, with yeah. Jonathan Strayan. Um, and but he agreed to come talk about Wolf sometime with us, which was really cool. And so we'll we'll do that. And um, who knows, maybe one day. Yeah. Maybe one day we could be on the Cood Street podcast. Maybe so. <laughs> if he ever wants to stop talking to writers and start talking about podcasts. People, talk about people who talk about talk writers. Talk about writers, exactly. <laughs> but otherwise, we went to a few panels. Um, I told you I wandered around a little bit last night because Capricorn, like if you look online, Capricorn has a whole lot of things about how they do parties every night. Mm. And they even do like a contest to see which were the best parties that served the best drinks. And I went up to one floor and there were a couple rooms that had open doors, but 
they were all very quiet. They had a couple people in there. And I don't know, maybe I should have waited till like one or two in the morning. I'm going to say that at this particular Capricorn, I don't know what it's usually like, but this one, I would say the median age is probably about 10 years older than me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, there, there were. And, and no, no shade throwing to anyone, but I have seen a few walkers. Yeah. Uh, like being used. <laughs> so, um, you know, I will probably be there. I'm not saying anything bad about it, but yeah, it is, it has definitely shown the older thing, which I, I don't know. Is that we like we were just talking about the sort of old COVID weirdness? I don't know if that's surprising. I think that, yeah. Well, it it ought to be surprising. Yeah. It ought to be the opposite, right? You'd think, yeah. But when you're of a diff- different generation, the idea of actually staying home away from stuff you want to do, yeah. I mean, look. Let me t- tell you from from the older age, we don't have that much longer. And we have to, you know, we, we want to live in whatever's left. Left, so we're going to take those risks. Funny. Obviously, that has been true. Yeah. So I don't know. And I did. I read something the other day about how, like, con culture is really something from, like, it's an older generations thing. That and could be. That, I mean, there are definitely a few people running around here in costumes and doing little things in younger groups. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I but the thing that I read talked about how. Con attendance is primarily now people like 40s and up. Like really? That, that makes up a whole lot more than the young, the younger Wait, Even crowd. the big ones and stuff like That's that? That's what it said. Now, I don't think that counted like Comic-Con and those kinds of things, but... Um, and maybe that's the thing. Maybe Comic Con uh, is just you, a much bigger spectacle, and so it could still have it could still skew, you yeah, know, much older than that. Yeah, there was even there was you know, I saw there was one panel, one on the other days talking about like if you are a con organizer or work with con organizations, like how to get more people to come. Like that was the the well, I would focus imagine of the panel. that would be everybody. If you're not, yeah. I'm not sure you're Comic Con. That's probably what they're all thinking about. Yeah. So anyway, but that's that's kind of sad. I remember. I mean, growing up, I didn't go to as many sci-fi general cons like this. I went to a lot of the gaming cons in mm-hmm. Dallas and those were, I mean, there's always tons of kids there, but but that's that's a very different experience. Well, yeah, that is true. So, when my kids were little, they would go to these like anime cons yeah. and that's, that. yeah, the, the median age for that is around 15. Yeah. And... Yeah. So, but otherwise, let's see, what do we do? This morning we went to a Tolkien, an Influences on Tolkien panel and there was some, some interesting stuff there. I don't think there weren't any surprises. No, I didn't learn anything particularly new. Um, I did recommend the uh, the Tales by Tolkien uh, anthology, and I can recommend that still. That's, yeah. that's a very good anthology. Yeah, they should have brought that up earlier. After you mentioned that, I'm like, oh, yeah, duh. I didn't <laughs> <laughs> that would have been good. Because they were really trying to focus on like other fantasy writers from late Before. 19th, early mm-hmm. 20th century right. who were doing it. Um, I had forgotten about Haggard. And that he, that Tolkien yeah. actually Oh, he did. did. He and C.S. Lewis loved Haggard. I had forgotten about that because I always still, even to this day, I still think of Haggard as just she. Like, that's that's what I remember. Well, that, and that's, I know that's, that's the one they always talk about as well. They they were crazy about she. Yeah. But no, apparently, I had forgotten. And I've read those letters. <laughs> I should know. <laughs> I, I, oh, well. But anyway, yeah. So you, you learn something you had forgotten every day. So that was kind of cool. Uh, we went to the, the, what was the other one? Um, the one uh, after the, that. Uh, was... The one we went. What did we go? We... Oh, the weird bad movie. Weird bad movie. Yeah, that, that was that was okay. That was fun. I that was fun. heard about stuff I'd never heard before. That has absolutely nothing to do with what we're talking about. But um, <laughs> but yeah. So like they really seemed. Um, there was a lot of talk about uh, Zardos. Well, a lot that's of talk got to about... be like the quintessential weird bad yeah, movie. Yeah, but so that that came up over and over and over again, which I thought yeah. was interesting. Uh, the, okay. my, but... my thought, was, yeah, as we talk, discussed on the way out, was, was I'm not really sure whether RoboCop 2 is a bad movie. <laughs> 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 because I like it so much. And, and yeah, I can recognize all of the things. Well, gosh, it goes on forever. Gosh, it like ends three times. Oh, and it's just weird and disjointed. And yeah, that's, I think that's why I like it. But I have to admit, I know I saw it. I'm trying to see if I still remember anything. Oh, you got to see it again. It's great. And I'm bad on movies. I told you before, I just don't watch as many movies. Oh, my, yeah. My well, movie Robocop has one of my favorite lines that I use all the time I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a meme too. I think I, <laughs> yeah, so I think I thought that. Was, so that was fun. The best one that we went to 
was a panel about books you've never read or books no one's ever read. Yeah. Um, and it was great just, books you've never read. Yeah, which was really cool and was all about yeah, basically just Obscure. four people on the panel yeah. saying what some of their favorite stuff was. That I no was one has hopeful ever that about. Gary K. Wolf would bring up Gene Wolf, but to be fair. <laughs> no, I mean, I, he may not have been quite obscure enough. Yeah, I think Wolf was not obscure enough. He did mention Lafferty, which is he, the yeah. one name that I'm pretty sure most people listening to this have heard of before. Um, but he threw that out there, and it was cool because lots of people were like, "Huh, interesting. I don't yeah. know that person." He, well, he's yeah, and he, he's people are talking about whether uh, Gene Wolf has is having a Gene sense. Uh, there is a Lafferty <laughs> sense, I think. Yeah, yeah. So Catistic Press and. Um, once more gets in print, like the best of Lafferty, that is going a big way, at least in terms of like new publishing. But mm -hmm. if they can get some of his other stuff, well, I'm surprised that, um, oh shoot, the one about Thomas More, uh, the novel, that was reprinted so often. Past Master. Oh, Past Master. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if it's in print now, but it seems like that one could come back. But I, I don't know, his short stories are so much better, but they're also Stranger. So, <laughs> well, that's yeah, that's that's the appeal, yeah. isn't it? But that was cool. Let's see. I'm trying to think of things that were there. There's a lot of stuff I hadn't heard of before, and then a lot of they mentioned a lot of old space opera. Like there was yeah. a whole lot of, of older space opera that got mentioned. Well, if you're gonna, um, I mean, if you're gonna talk about you know science, there, and and then and it was just to be fair, it's, it is science fiction fantasy. Mm -hmm. they, they're not just talking about you know old romance novels, that, right? Right. So, and if you, yeah, it's going to be space opera. Isn't that pretty much what it's all about when you get to a certain era? It seems like, yeah, because they had like, let's see, Lee Brackett's Long... No, that's not one. Lee Brackett's Long Tomorrow, and that's not space opera, though. That's like a post-apocalyptic thing, which I know I've read but don't remember much about. Um, what were they? Oh, Out Past the Stars by... Is it KB Wagers? This is... I'm trying to read my horrible script here. So, um... <laughs> And oh, there's a there's an unreliable narrator where a guy is basing a story on his illegible handwriting. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Um, there's a lot of uh, of Caribbean uh, base. Yeah, uh, base. one of the guys on the panel, he is he's an English professor at a little smaller school which has a name I actually can't pronounce. Sean Duke. Sean Duke. There we go. Sean Duke from the University. That's of, the th of Bemidji. Bemidji. Bemidji, Bemidji State, State University. There we go. Uh, but he does a podcast with, uh, I believe he's Jamaican writer. By the way, the name of that podcast, which I couldn't remember when we were talking, is The Skiffy and Fanty Show. And the other host, uh, in addition to Sean Duke, is Brandon O'Brien, who's from Trinidad. And another cool thing I didn't realize was that Kate Sherrod, who is a listener to us and also goes by Asapego on Twitter, who, if you follow us, you've seen her chat with us every now and then, um, she was a host on that show for a little while, which was really cool. I had no idea. So if you're listening, hi, Kate. And uh, but he's taught a lot of that too, and it looks like one of his books was uh, trying to sort of trace a lot of genre stuff mm -hmm. about that. So that was pretty interesting. But he had a lot of, of good suggestions there. Um, I even talked to him afterwards, and I was kind of like, "Yeah, it seems like there is a whole lot of now like new Caribbean things that are are getting slightly more popular." And like I don't know, I mean, Karen Lord is one person who her she and Nayla Hopkinson are two writers who I. I've read a ton. I think I've read everything Karen Lord published. Wow. I think. Because um, she's only... I think it's time it's to only start like, the Karen Lord podcast. No, I, <laughs> I mean, it's good. She's really good. Like, she's really... I really like I really like her stuff. Um, uh, in fact, her first book reminds me a lot of Lafferty because it's all kind of told in these sort of... It's like taking sort of Caribbean fairy tales and myths, mm -hmm. but sort of turning them into a novel and then having the novelist things happen... Oh, in cool. the same kind of logic as the things were, and it was really, really cool, really strange. But um, but that's why I read it. But then she's written some other stuff that's more one that's sort of space opera. Um, one book that reminded me a lot of um, in John Harrison's uh, Light series, uh -huh. Light, and, um, so kind of like sci-fi, but with a, a real sort of weird bent to it. He didn't necessarily have a good answer for why there was so much Caribbean stuff. Kind of <laughs> but I just in vogue, everything. I mean, you know, there is definitely. It's like trying to explain the British invasion. So. I guess so. Yeah, but there's definitely. I mean, there is a. I mean, hell, I wore my shirt the other day for with all the sort of African and African American writers, sci-fi writers. Um, and that there's there's a fad for that right now, which is good. I'm all for it. Um, 
But yeah, then some fantasy stuff I had never heard of, or at least don't think I've heard of, like this um, Bridge of Birds by a guy named uh, Barry Hugart, which one guy was saying was the, one of the best fantasy novels he'd ever read. And I looked it up, and it's, a, it's the first of a trilogy about a fake China. It's like like an alternate. Oh, that's so cool. China, um, and yeah. so it's kind of cool. Like I had mentioned Ernest Brama earlier, who if you if you don't know Ernest Brama, writes these really really fun stories about a guy named Kai Lung. That one I really was the one thing that I really kind of want to look up just because it sounded so different. I mean, that one guy was super enthusiastic about it, but also yeah, fantasy set and it's probably would get hankles up about cultural appropriation ishness just like yeah. Ernest Brahma's stories are all they they have absolutely no connection to real China at all but he sets things in China and all the people speak in ways that are like oh the so honorable so and so you would do this and it, like Charlie Chan yeah and, and it's on the one hand it's horrible but at the same time it's they have these really really funny stories that are all these weird like comedies of manners and it's all about how Kai Lung is this sort of loser guy who can cheat everybody out of whatever just by following the social codes and mores of his weird little China in like the perfect ways and anyway they're really super entertaining so now I want to read this Bridge of Birds um, and oh somebody brought up there's one called Firebreak by Nicole uh, Corner Stace was her name which who said that it was it's like Ready Player One but good but it's a, another kind of post-apocalyptic thing where the main character survives by playing video games <laughs> um, in some online world, which seemed kind of cool. Yeah, was that the one that uh, Gary K. Wolf said that was one of the best science? No, no, that's not true. That's not the one. So that looked interesting. Again, something I had never heard of before. Um, oh, the other thing that sounded kind of cool that I'd never heard of was uh, from the author William Horwood, but it's a whole series about moles. Oh but yeah, it's kind yeah. of a it's like a red wall series, but it's about these instead of mice or rats or whatever, they're moles. <laughs> and <laughs> the the first one's called Duncan Woods.